Legends, Bobby Bell, to present the Lamar Hunt Trophy to the Hunt family. Bobby. Hey, thank you. Hey, Kansas City fans, are you glad now? It's been a long time. Bye. But I am honored to present to Clark and Norma Hunt. We bring in Lamar Hunt back to Kansas City. All the great drafting you did. Really, what was it? What was your main point when you sat down and said, here's how we'll build this football team? Well, first and foremost, we've always had great support from our ownership, the York family. Kyle and I, uh, we trusted each other. We came up with a vision of what we were looking for, and we worked as a team. And when you work as a team, great things can happen. And we're going to the Super Bowl. And But I know this about the Super Bowl. Nobody remembers who goes. They remember who wins. And uh, we're going and giving our best effort against a great team and the Chiefs. But we want to bring one back here. What's happening? What's happening? Did you miss me? Of course you missed me, man. I'm a missable guy. Whatever the hell that means. Uh, Y'all know the routine, man. If you're looking at this face and listening to this voice, you are tuned in to the best kept secrets in sport talk. I am a smoke, and you are officially on the hot seat. What do we do on the hot seat? We set somebody's ass on fire. And let me tell you something. The seat that the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs are about to sit on this Sunday, it don't get no hotter than that. Yes, sir, boss. Yes, sir. Y'all saw that? That was pretty cool. I figured out how to make it change. That's pretty dope. Uh, Yeah, we're talking Super Bowl today. Yes, sir, boss. We're talking Super Bowl. I'm going to give you my predictions, a little bit of uh, analysis, who I think is going to win and why. So, hey, man, without any further ado, class is in session, man. Paying homage to the ghost to my left and my right. Let's dive into this shit. So, uh, yeah, we got the uh, Kansas City Chiefs and the uh, San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl. They won their respective conference championships about a week ago. Um, you're looking at probably one of the more highly anticipated Super Bowl matchups in recent memory because both of these teams are very evenly matched. Like, there may not be a clear-cut advantage from one team over the other. Uh, I think Vegas still has, last I checked, I think Vegas still had the uh, Chiefs as a slim, small favorite. And again, if you follow these teams over the course of the season, you can see why. They're very evenly matched. Um, I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be the first Super Bowl I've seen in a few years. Can't wait to see it. I watched a good deal of film on both teams, which uh, helped bring me to my conclusion. I crunched a few numbers and... Um, The San Francisco 49ers are the better team. Um, not by a lot, but they are the better team. They are the more well-rounded team. You can even argue that they are the the, the more well-coached team. I think Kyle Shanahan is a very, very sharp co uh, offensive mind and a head coach in general. Um, that said, I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Patty Moe. <laughs> Patty Mo the real deal. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is the truth in a half. And I understand one player can't beat an entire team, and we'll dive into that a little bit later, but right now, Patrick Mahomes is the truth. You understand me? The truth. Patrick Mahomes may be the most talented quarterback we've ever seen. And what's crazy is he's the most talented quarterback we've probably ever seen. He's only in his second full season as an NFL quarterback, which means he probably has a lot more to learn. I don't know that to be certain. The shit really just sounded good because I'm still in awe of how good he is at such a young age and how quickly he was able to grasp. Like, you know, when you're at this age, the game still moves a little bit fast for you. It doesn't seem to move too fast. It's almost like the league probably needs to be catching up with him. Um... It, there are some words, there are some terms that I think are overused in sports. Um, I remember in the 90s, which to me was probably the golden age of college basketball, the term that was always frequently used was, was potential. Every goddamn body had potential. I used to get sick and tired of hearing that word. And I was GOAT. Like, you, that make like how many greatest of all times can you have at one time? You, you, want, you motherfuckers understand what the acronym GOAT means? Like, I, I didn't know there could be more than one GOAT, but whatever. The term 
specifically to what we're discussing today is special. That term is used as an adjective all too frequently to describe something that doesn't necessarily fit the criteria of whatever it is you're describing or fit the bill, so to speak. Patrick Mahomes is special. That word applies to him in every sense of it. That kid, he's not from here. He's not from planet Earth. I understand he's said to be, he probably has his birth certificate with his mom's name on it, his dad's name on it, and place about it or the bullshit. No, nah, he's not from here. And I don't need to get into all the different superlatives that make up who he is as a quarterback. But that kid is special. And don't get me wrong. It's going to take more than a special quarterback to win a Super Bowl because football is the ultimate team sport. But God damn, he is good enough to mask a lot of deficiencies any team would have. And Kansas City doesn't really have that many. So if you are an opposing team, you have to be racking your brain. And I'm pretty sure that's what Kyle Shanahan and Robert Slay have been doing. How the hell do we slow down or stop? I'm not going to stop. How the hell do we slow down a talent like that? And it's not just a talent. I believe in protecting your investment, right? If you want to make an investment, I believe in protecting it. So if you're going to draft a quarterback, number one overall, he's going to be the face of your franchise for the next 10 to 12 years, right? I believe in putting the pieces around that quarterback to make him as successful as possible. You invest in the offensive line. You get him weapons. We love that word in football. You get him weapons around him. You get him the right coaches in place, the right support staff. Kansas City has executed that magnificently. You look at what Kansas City has done as it relates to going out and getting the Sammy Watkins, taking a chance on Tariq Hill in the sixth round, I believe, fourth or sixth round, whatever it was, drafting McCall Hartman, who was probably, they would think I'm going to replace Tariq Hill. Um, going out, doing your job, scouting and going to get Travis Kelsey. You have a very underrated offensive line. And up until last year, you had a really talented running back you took out of Toledo and Kareem Hunt. They did their job as it relates to making sure they had the pieces to make that guy successful. So, again, if you are the Kansas City – I'm sorry, the San Francisco 49ers, how do we neutralize this talent? It's simple. You get his ass on the ground. Let me tell you something. The San Francisco 49ers are really good at getting the quarterback on the ground. That's how you make this an even playing field. You hit him. You hit him hard. You hit him early. Preferably why he still has the ball in his hands, right? And I, last I checked, the 49ers, somewhere around fifth in the league in sacks, they got almost 50 for the season. That's a really good number, right? That number doesn't impress me at nowhere near as much as this number. They blitz less than a fourth of the plays on defense. Let that shit sit in for a second. Let that sink in. They are a top five team as it relates to sacking the quarterback, but they blitz a little over 20% of the game. People, that's fucking incredible. And don't get me wrong, that's an incredible number. And I'm pretty sure you've seen other teams before who have produced a number similar to that in the past because we've seen some great defenses. But right now, with this being a quarterback-driven league and you have everything – for, you, you have everything at your disposal to make the quarterback successful. The rules have changed. The way they want you to hit the quarterback, how you tackle the quarterback. There are so many things that play in favor of the quarterback and it kind of has a, the, 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 it kind of has the defense at a disadvantage. The 49ers said to hell with that shit. And I, I remember laughing at the 49ers. Because I remember like for three years in a row, they drafted the same damn player. Ar- Arik Armstead, Solomon Thomas and Forrest Buckner. Of course not in that order. I was like, what the fuck are they doing? And don't get me wrong, one is probably better than the other three, and that's Buckner I'm speaking of, but 
I believe if you're going to draft, you draft people to compliment the other person who you may have drafted a year before or around earlier, right? Like, I'll give you an example. Remember when Cleveland selected Miles Garrett, number one overall pick? Great. Great draft pick, great player. The next year, they had two picks. I think two picks in the top four, top five, maybe. For the life of me, I cannot understand why they chose to pass on Bradley Chubb. Think about this. Miles Garrett on one side, Bradley Chubb on the other side. Woo! And listen, that's not to say that the kid they got from Ohio State is a scrub. He's actually a decent, a decent corner. And cornerback are as important as defensive end in this league because it's a passing league. You know what? I just lied to you. It's not as important. If it is indeed a passing league, if it's a quarterback-driven league, if the best way to combat having an all-world quarterback is having a person who's going to maybe get him on the ground. That's where the defensive end comes in there. So just imagine again having Bradley Chubb on one side and Miles Garrett on the other side. All oh, the possibilities were going to be endless. But I digress. Um, again, I believe in – these people, these players um, complimented one another. So I didn't understand drafting three players of the same, who do the same things well, who had the same attributes, who had the same skill set. But it's paid off a little bit. Solomon Thomas, not so much. You add in Joey Bosa. This is why. This is why you can get to the quarterback and not blitz. Let me tell you something. I'm of, I'm of the Bill Parcells with, like, I'm, a, I'm old school. I believe in building a franchise from the out, from the inside out. I believe if you can, can control the trenches, you control the goddamn football game. If you control the trenches, you can do whatever it is you want to do. And it is wonderful. It is wonderful to be able to just blitz your four down linemen and push the rest of the seven in coverage. Man! That is a defensive... Uh, coordinator's dream and San Francisco does that probably better than anybody in the league when you look at those two numbers the number of sacks they generate and that percentage they use to uh, blitz the quarterback that's top shelf that, that, that's elite I probably just gave you the antidote to beat Kansas City right so now you're probably saying why are you contradicting yourself because we have examples of teams, or at least a team, who had elite down linemen and were able to get to the quarterback without having to blitz, 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 right? That would be the neutralizer in this game. Again, it would be something that would to level the playing field, right? It's the reason why that light is on. I'm going to tell you why I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to beat the 49ers. Go back a few weeks. Go back to week 14 when the 49ers rolled into New Orleans and played the Saints. The Saints gave the Chiefs the blueprint on what to do on how to beat the 49ers. The 49ers were petrified at what the Saints could potentially do through the air over the top. So as aggressively as they normally play, they scaled back a little bit. You know what? We're going to try to find something to circumvent their aerial attack. We're going to change up our defensive philosophy entirely. It's almost as if Sean Payton knew that. It's almost as if Drew Brees knew that. So the short to intermediate game, the dink and dunk game, the underneath game, New Orleans worked it to a fucking T, and it almost worked. Offensively, they did their job. They scored almost 50 points. They scored 46 points to be exact. They did their job. I guess at this point you're asking me, how the hell does this correlate to a team who, is, who has an explosive aerial attack who likes to go over the top. I'll tell you. Remember when Andy Reid first came into the league as a head coach over there with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles? Remember his quarterback was Donovan McNabb? One thing I've never been able to accuse Donovan McNabb of being is accurate. I've never heard anybody describe him as an accurate quarterback. As a matter of fact, I think Brian Westbrook, who was a quarterback in those uh, Philadelphia Eagle years, and that was that was a really good football team. Well, those were really good football teams. If you look at what Brian Westbrook did, I'd say for about a five-year stretch, 
Brian Westbrook averaged 96 targets a season, probably with the high of 114. He and L.J. Smith were usually the leading receivers on those teams until uh, T.O. came. Fast forward to Kansas City. I believe Andy Reid got to Kansas City in 2013. Who was his quarterback? Alex Smith, the dink and dunk king. Mr. Conservative. Well, for those five seasons, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, with Alex Smith as his quarterback, they averaged damn near 11 wins a season. And that's pretty remarkable considering the fact that they were so bland and vanilla and predictable on offense. But Andy Reid is one of the top three play callers in the game of football and has been for at least a decade and a half. Very underrated head coach. What he and Eric Bieniemy were able to do and able to switch up philosophies from one quarterback to the next is nothing short of remarkable. It is something that should be something that should be said more often. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that Andy Reid is no stranger to the short to intermediate game, to the dink and dunk game, to the underneath game. I'm pretty sure he went back to find out who scored the most points on this 49er defense and how they did it. That's coaching 101. I'm pretty sure he noticed that when the Saints went out there, don't get me wrong, the Saints took their shots. The Saints took their shots normally when they were able to suck their defense in because it's a game of cat and mouse. It's a game of chess. The 49ers adjusted. When they did, you see them go over the top. You saw the role Jared Cook played in that game. Anybody here, anybody watching this think Jared Cook is better than Travis Kelsey? Nope. You saw the role, um, what's what's the kid named Deontay Harris played? Deontay Harris had the, I don't want to say the exact same skill set as McCole Hartman, but they're similar. Deontay Harris had a big game. Anybody here think Deontay Harris is better than McCole Hartman? Nope. Then you add the wizardry, the skill set, the greatness of what a young Patrick Mahomes is going to bring into this game. Listen, the 49ers should win this football game. They are the better well-rounded, more equipped, better coach team. But you'll hear me say this a lot when it comes to playoffs. It's not always about who's the better team. It's about matchups. What you did the previous week in the previous series or in the previous whatever in the playoffs, that shit really doesn't matter here because it's about matchups. The best team, Some you ever wonder why sometimes the, you'll see a team that supposedly is more superior to one team and that team ends up losing it because it was a bad matchup. Um, you, you you really think the Titans were better than the um, – I, I get it. I understand that we can have their deficiencies, but do you think the Titans were better than the Patriots? No, they're not. That was a bad matchup. That's why New England lost at home. You look at what the uh, – the, what the Ravens like to do versus what um, the Titans like to do, they're pretty even in that regard. It was a bad matchup for the Ravens. It's not about the Ravens. I'm sorry, it's not It's not about the Titans being a hot team at that time. Nah, matchups. Had one, one, <laughs> you want to know what makes this true? Imagine the Titans playing the uh, the Chiefs in the first round. We'll be talking about the Titans. They'd have got their ass destroyed, much like they did last week in the AFC Championship game. It's about matchups. This presents a bad matchup for the for, The 49ers don't really match up well against this team based off what they do well. And when you flip the coin, you know what you're going to get out of the 49ers as, as it relates to offense. They're going to run the ball down your throat and see if there's something you can do about it. Well, Tennessee tried to do the same goddamn thing. Didn't work out that well for him, did it? And it's not the same, right? I'm not just sitting here looking at numbers as it relates to how much a team runs the ball or how much a team runs the ball versus another. No, that's not what I'm doing because you can tell it's it's evident that they use a lot of motion, a lot of trickery, a, a lot of uh, pre-step movement and as it relates to getting their uh, runners out and open, getting their playmakers out and open so you can, you know, Get him in one-on-one situations, which makes sense. 
well, to me, it's, it's clearly what the game plan would be defensively. Make Jimmy Garoppolo beat you over the top. I'm going to put seven to eight guys in the box religiously, consistently. I'm going to have my defensive ends, my outside linebackers control the edge. If need be, we'll start plugging up these A and B gaps. But I'm not going to let you get anything inside or outside running. He's going to have to beat me over the top because it's going to be a whole lot of man-to-man. Doesn't seem that hard, does it? It's not like they have a shabby defense. The Kansas City Chiefs have a top-10 defense. And they get to the quarterback at a decent rate as well. I spoke earlier about um, how do you neutralize a talent like Patrick Mahomes. Well, you rush the quarterback, right? I don't foresee them blitzing a lot because I don't think they're going to have the bandwidth to do it based on what you see on the outside from these guys, the Chiefs I'm speaking of. And then you look at the fact that I just mentioned earlier, the Chiefs have a very underrated offensive line. It's very underrated. They give up no more than maybe a sack and a half a game. They got to be at least top three in the league. I don't remember the numbers uh, uh, specifically off the top of my head, but I ain't a lot of teams giving up less than a sack and a half a game. That's pretty impressive. This is a bad matchup. And one thing that had me wary as it relates to making this pick was usually – when you see players in any sport of superstar caliber, a super superstar caliber, reach the pinnacle of their career this early, they usually get their ass whooped, because again, it's just too it's too much for them to consume. It's too much for them to take in. You're just not ready yet. I don't see this happening with Patty Mo, and there are a couple of people, a couple of players in different sports, even in football as well, that come to mind. They reach the pinnacle of their career of their career too soon. And they ran into the wrong team, so to speak. I don't see that happening with Patrick Mahomes. This is his time. And it's not, you you don't want to take these things for granted because who's to say you'll have another time. But this is his time. When you are this good, and when a franchise has done a good of a job as putting the tools around you necessary to win, there are no excuses. And I don't think Kansas City is going to have any. I think, to, to be quite honest with you, I think potentially the 49ers are running into a bus, so. Because to me, the matchups just don't favor them. Because God forbid the 49ers get down two scores in this game. It might get late early. But uh, that's it. Those are my picks. Well, that's my pick for the Super Bowl. Um, got the Chiefs winning. Um, all signs point to the 49ers winning because, again, like I said, for the third time, I think they are the better team, but the better team doesn't always win. Um, before I get out of here, um, recording this Monday, about 24 hours removed from the tragedy that happened uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, we lost a good one. Um gone too soon um, in football um, one of the highest forms of praise you can receive is somebody calling you a dog if somebody calls you a dog on the football field that is probably the highest compliment you can play a football player personally well in basketball the equivalent of that is being called a killer Kobe Bryant was a killer. And I don't know, a, and I'm talking about from error to error to error. There aren't a lot of guys you can label a killer. You know how good you have to be at your craft to be labeled a killer? Prior to Sunday, if I saw the name Kobe Bryant, if I read it, if I heard it, that was the very first thing that came to my mind. He was a killer. It's hard to take something from tragedy. But if you do, and I say this because he was so inspirational, he touched so many people. If there's something you can take from this, I believe that everybody has a gift. 
everybody has a God-given gift. I believe we need to spend more of our personal time finding out what that gift is and becoming a killer at it. If there's something you can take away from this, take away from his lasting legacy of one of the things he's going to be remembered as as it relates to a champion, a father, a Laker, whatever it is you're going to remember him by, just understand that he put in countless, countless, endless hours perfecting his craft. He wanted to be the absolute best at what he did. One of my fondest memories of a story I heard about Kobe Bryant was the first time he met Michael Jordan. They laughed. They exchanged a pound. Phil Jackson said he looked him square in the eye and told him, you know I bust your ass, right? That was a kid saying that to the GOAT. And he meant every word of it. He was a killer. Find what you do and be the very best at it. Don't count the days. Make the days count. And a person who worked as tireless, as tire, as tirelessly as he did, he made the days count. Don't take anything for granted. Find out what you do. Find out what your gift is, and become a killer at it. Be so good at it that your name resonates with greatness. Nothing stopping you but you. So. That said, until we see you again, killer, it's been a pleasure. You all are officially off the high seat. See y'all next time.